grace and peace and God bless you and welcome to fire in the morning I want to welcome you this morning and thank God because this is the day that the Lord has made and we are already rejoicing and we are glad in it why because we are here because God has been gracious to us because he has allowed us to wake up this morning hallelujah and so we are here and giving him glory and honor and just magnifying his name hallelujah the lord is good amen and we want to get into the word this morning and prepare our hearts for this day that is ahead of us i want to go to a familiar verse of scripture amen and this morning i want to share a couple of things with you on today Amen. I want to talk to you about fighting the past and moving beyond the past. Everybody has a past. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter how long you've been walking with the Lord. It doesn't matter, you know what I'm saying, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you are educated or uh, uneducated. Everybody has a past. And so today I want to talk about moving beyond that past. Because sometimes the things that God has for us, for our future, we can't, we can't get to them because of the past. And so if you are constantly stuck in what is going on in the past, if your mind is constantly looking at what's going on in the past, if your heart is stuck on the things that have happened in the past, hallelujah, then you cannot go forward. You cannot walk in the fullness of God. You know how many people that are stuck in the past? Do you know how many people are still stuck on a past move of God? They're stuck on somebody hurt them in the past. Somebody did something to them in the past. You know, somebody, you know, they used to have good friends in the past. They used to be able to go forth and God used them mightily. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and, you know, they may have been powerful people, but it was in the past. It's not going on today. And so I want us to focus today, amen, on getting beyond those things that are in the past. Amen. Hallelujah. Those things, praise God, that have come to, to hinder your walk with God, to hinder your future, to hinder the great things that God has for you in your future. Amen. We want to move beyond, move beyond. So let's go to Philippians chapter three. And I know that this is a familiar verse of scripture, but we're going to build from here. Amen. Philippians chapter three and verse 13. He says, Paul says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It is notable that you can't even go forward until you forget what's behind you. There is, it is no way that you can be in a forward momentum, a forward pressing, a forward progression If you are stuck at what happened in the past, who said something to you yesterday, who made you mad yesterday, who walked away from you last month, who's not your friend no more because of whatever happened last year, you got to let go of what took place in the past, you know, and, and I'm going to tell you what brought me to this. You know, I was looking at. Uh, an anniversary spirit, so I call it, I call it anniversary spirit, that Israel had to deal with because Saul was made, commanded to kill the Amalekites, okay, and I'm not going to take you through all the verses, I'm just going to take you through some of them, but Saul was told to kill the Amalekites, and because he did not do it, these people showed up in his, from his past. From Israel's past over and over and over again and troubled them. 
How many of you have things from your past that keep showing up? How many of you have things that God told you to deal with from your past? And every time you turn around, every time you find yourself going forward, doing the things of God, this thing from the past finds its way to come and hinder you. It could be people that God told you to let go, but you refuse to let go. They're supposed to be in your past, but they're in your future. Or they, I should say they're in your present right now, but they're supposed to be, amen, you're supposed to have gotten rid of these people and i'm not saying it in a nasty way because you know some people they cut people off once a month but i'm not talking about that i'm talking about really truly obeying god so that you can walk into the future of the things that he's called you to let's look at genesis chapter 36 hallelujah genesis chapter 36 let's see and we're going to look at verse let's go to verse 12 Genesis 36 and verse 12 and verse 12 says and Timnah was the concubine of Eliphaz Esau's son and she bare to Eliphaz Amalek these were the sons of Ada Esau's wife so here is when Esau, I mean, excuse me, when Amalek first comes on the scene, we see that Amalek was a relative. How many of y'all have relatives that just wear you out, Lord Jesus? So we see that the first time that Amalek is seen is here in Genesis chapter 36, and he is the grandson of Esau. Now, remember, Esau lost his birthright to Jacob, okay? His mother was a concubine, not and she didn't have no inheritance. Esau's mother, if you look look in the scripture, go back and study it, okay? And for him, he was a hater from the womb. There's some people that they was born to hate on God's people. Boy, and I hate to use that term hater, but this is this is, you know, building something here. Okay, so what happened is this speaks to a spirit of vengeance that he was born with. Amalek was born with the spirit of vengeance on him. Amalek was born with a heart to uh, fight against his own family. Okay, and because this spirit was on him because of his grandfather, his grandfather had hatred. Okay, for Jacob, because Jacob had stolen his brother's birthright. And because of that, that thing went down through the generations, okay? So here's his son. Amalek is his grandson, rather. And he is born with that hatred to come against the children of Israel, okay? And so in time, this, the Amalekites, which were the, the, the offspring of Amalek, became a trouble, uh, a troubling spot. They were in the promised land. And they had to, they were supposed to have been killed. But Saul, when he came upon them, did nothing to them. Now let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 8. And I'm going to tell you why I'm building like this. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 8. Now this is God when Saul... <clears throat> excuse me, had sinned against the Lord at Gilgal, okay? Here's, let's start at verse 3. This is the instruction that God gave him. He said, now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they had. God was trying to give, get him to the place where he would be delivered from this trouble listen to me god will always give you instruction on how to get delivered from your trouble from the things that that come against you now this is what happens when we don't when we have stuff from our past amalek was part of israel's past the the trouble they they were a troubling 
uh, troubled people or troubling people for the children of Israel. And God had made, had set up a remedy and Saul did not follow those instructions. How many times did God tell you how to deal with that trouble that keeps popping up from your past, but you don't want to deal with it, right? How many times have God given you instruction and said to you, this is how you handle this. Go and do this. Go and do that. But you don't follow that instruction and you find out that this thing keeps troubling you. Let's finish reading the verse because I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm excited about this right here. Because I know that each of you that are listening have had to deal with that very same thing that the past, something from the past would come up and trouble you. A person, a, a thing, you know what I'm saying? An issue, a, a, a thought, you know, a difficulty. Things that you were supposed to let go of and let God deal with. He gave you the remedy on how to deal with that thing from the past. But here we are in our present and that thing is still troubling us. Let's go back to the word. 1 Samuel 15 verse 3. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not. These are explicit instructions. I told you that this was something that, you know what I'm saying, was from the past that kept popping up. And you're going you're gonna to see how it comes up again. All right. He says, utterly slay. Okay, he says, okay, spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. And verse 4 says, and Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Telaim, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. Okay, and Saul came to a city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Kenites, go, depart. Get you down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For you showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. And Saul smote the Am Amalekites from Havilah until thou comest unto shore that is over against Egypt. Listen to verse 8. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive. How did he take them? Alive. Say it again. How did he take them? Alive. And utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But the but Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and the oxen and of the fatlings and of the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and refused that they destroyed utterly. Did you see what he did wrong? Verse 3 told him to kill the women, kill the children, kill the oxen, kill the suckling, kill the sheep, kill every camel, kill the ass, kill the asses, kill men, kill everything. That included everything. That land, they should have seen nothing coming up from that land but smoke. He was supposed to destroy what had been troubling them from the past down to absolutely nothing being left but Saul and the people spared Agag spared the best sheep spared the oxen spared the fatlings have you ever 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 looked at people that you were supposed to get rid of out of your life and then all of a sudden you start feeling compassion oh but they you know they just people they don't mean no harm mm. oh but you know what? I can't do that. That wouldn't be right. Hmm. You know how much trouble they gave you. You know how much issue they caused. You know this is a prophetic word. You need to receive this word right here. You need to hear God today. You need to hear God through this word. Okay? Hallelujah. You saw, you saw the trouble that you went through. But yet you didn't obey the instructions. Now listen to me. All right. Now the Amalekites ended up being a, 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 a thorn in the side of, of the children of Israel for years. Okay. They kept getting in the way of everything. You, you know why God told them to get rid of them? Because the, the Amaleks, um, the Amalekites or Amalek himself represented, even in the spirit realm, represented pure evil. Or those who have given themselves over to the enemy, to the dark side, to the spirit of impurity. 
Okay. They gave themselves over to the spirit of impurity. All right. They represented, uh, what they, and what they meant was spiritual blindness, instability, false teaching, false prophets, lying spirit, uh, brazen words, and the spirit of pride. God was trying to get this weed that spirit out from among them. These same proud, haughty spirits that would come against the children of Israel in their time of trouble. Okay, God said, I need you to get rid of them. But instead, he decided he want to hold on to them. Okay, so here he goes. He doesn't do what he's supposed to do. Okay, before we got here to 1 Samuel... Can I take you to Exodus real quick? Because first time we see um, Amalek is when he was born. His genealogy, he being the grandson of Esau. But before we get to 1 Samuel, go back to Exodus real quick. Let's go to Exodus chapter 17. I'm going to show you the trouble. I'm going to show you the trouble. I'm going to show you the trouble. As you are getting ready for your day, as you get ready... To prepare yourself for your day. The same stuff that always troubles you when you go to work. The same stuff that always troubles you when you go to when you go to school. You know what I'm saying? Stuff from the past. Stuff that you should have dealt with already. Stuff that you should have already spoken to. You should have dismissed out of your life. I want to be able to help you today. So that you do not let your past trouble you. Hallelujah. I know, some of, I know you got to be tired of the past troubling you. Okay. Exodus chapter 17. All right. Listen, listen. This is the first battle that the children of Israel have. Verse 8 says, Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose out men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. Now this was the time where he held his hands up. Okay, and he had to have help holding his hands up. And every time that they held his hands up, every time Moses held his hands up, they won. Every time he let his hands down, they lost. Okay, now let's skip down to verse 13. And it says, And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said to Moses, Write this for a memorial in the book and rehearse it in the ears of, of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven listen to me God was telling him well let me finish reading this first and Moses built an altar and called on the name called the name of it Jehovah Nisi for the Lord for he said because the Lord had sworn that the Lord would have war with Amalek from generation to generation so he knew that this thing from the past was going to constantly keep coming up he said I'm going to war with, with Amalek from generation to generation but there's going to come an end to him okay verse verse 14 tells us that there was going to come an end to him can I tell you when his end came after all of these years then we skip over here to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15 this was supposed to be the end of Amalek this was supposed to be all that that he wrote. This should have been the end of the end of the end. But because Samuel did, I mean, because Saul did not follow God's instruction, because Saul didn't do what he was supposed to do, when David became king, he had problems with the Amalekites, okay? And all of the children of Israel and every king after him, they had difficulty. Now, can I tell you something? Go to the book of Esther. They... All the way until they get to the captivity. The Amalekites continue to trouble them. Okay. And then God comes back and, and keeps his word. Okay. I'm almost finished here. But I want to show you how you got to deal with your past. You got to annihilate that stuff from the past. You cannot entertain it. You can't worry about how somebody else feels about how you deal with your past. This stuff from the past has got to stop troubling you. And the only way is that you obey God. That you follow God's instruction. You know, people who keep doing the same stuff over and over and over and over again. You cannot keep making room for them. You have got to say, listen, I love you. But I got to go. I can't continue to hang around you. I wish we could be friends. I love your personality. But you know what? It's something about you that keep dragging me down. And because of that, I got to let you go. Let them be in the past. Let them go. Let them go. 
Okay? Remember I told you that Amalek... Amalek means blind, spiritual blindness, instability, false teaching, false prophet, lying spirit, brazen words, and, and to have a proud spirit. Anything in your life that keeps bringing you into instability, you got to let it go. Keeps bringing you into instability. The same stuff over and over and over again. The same things. Whose fault is it? You got to get away from the stuff from your past. Maybe it's a, a mindset that you have that's from the past. You keep thinking the same way you used to think. You got to let that go. And you can't walk in what God has put in front of you. He's blessed you with a great life. He's blessed you with wonderful jobs. You know, he blessed you with a great family. But you can't even enjoy what he has blessed you with because you look looking at where you come from in the past. Listen to me. I remember I remember even after I had got married and this you know may make sense to some and may not make sense to others. But I remember when I had got married um you know and the first time my husband and I had really had our first argument, our first real knockdown drag out kind of thing, you know, as a married couple I remember I just went into like this little shell, this little thing because the things that he said to me at the time reminded me of things in the way that my sister used to talk to me. One of my sisters. And so I was so hurt. I was all upset, whatever, whatever. But I remember the pattern of thinking in my mind at that time. And I was a young girl. I was only 18, you know. And I remember that pattern of thinking that was in my mind that it took me all the way back to my childhood and I started feeling like I felt when I was a child when my sister used to say one of my sisters you know used to say the things that she used to say to me and I had to pull myself out of that I had to I had to shake myself because I was like girl what's wrong with you where you are today has nothing to do with where you were. This is a different person. This is a different situation. This is a different scenario. What's wrong with you? Why are you, take, why are you allowing your mind to take you back to that place? Okay? And so, sometimes we don't really let go of the past. We think we have, but we don't. Because somebody can say something and it'll trigger a memory, trigger a feeling, trigger, you know what I'm saying, a, 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 some kind of you know, like flashback to take you back to where you were instead of you focusing on where you are. You've got to let go of the past. You got to fight until you get free from the past, until the past is not here in the present with you. Because if you don't do that, then you're going to constantly and continually still be with that same mindset. It's going to continue to hinder you. And you're going to find yourself being distracted from what God has for your future. Because of what happened in the past. I had to get delivered from that. When I realized that I had that flashback like that. I, oh no, that's the past. I got to let that go. And we praise God for deliverance. Amen. Now, back to the text. Let me take you here to Esther chapter 3. Because we're talking about how this spirit of Amalek, which was not dealt with properly by Saul, became a troubling spot. A troublesome spirit for the children of Israel. And and God said to Moses in Genesis I'm um, in Exodus chapter 17. God says to Moses that from generation to generation, you're going to have to fight with Amalek. You're going to keep seeing Amalek popping up. Okay, because he knew, he God knew, hallelujah, already that when he gave the command to Saul, that Saul wasn't going to follow his instructions. And that David was going to have to fight with him. And every king after them was going to have to deal with them. And here they are, the children of Israel are in captivity. All right. And here is, here is Esther in the palace and Mordecai tells uh, uh, Esther of uh, the plot that's going on. All right. Praise God. And Esther takes action. So here we want to look at this real quick. Esther chapter three, verse one. And it says, after these things, did King Ahasuerus promote Haman the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. All right. Let me keep reading this. For the king's servant, which were 
servants which were in the king's gate said to Mordecai, Mordecai while transgressors thou the king's commandment. Now it came to pass when they spake daily with him and he hearkened not unto them that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand for he had told them that he was a Jew and when he when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not nor did him reverence then was Haman full of wrath and he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone for they had showed him the people showed him the people of Mordecai wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. Now see, this is where the issue comes. But the, the, what is the word I want to use? The, the genealogy of Haman is given in verse 1. He says, after these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite. Okay, so this term Agagite, all right, is telling you that Agag was one, was one at, who was a descendant of the king of the Amalekites. Okay, if we were to go back to um, 1 Samuel, if you go back to 1 Samuel chapter 15, which I'm, I want to do that real quick so that I can read this to you. All right, because I know we read it already, but I want to go back to First Samuel chapter fifteen because I want you to look at who the king was. All right, First Samuel. It says verse eight. In verse eight, it says First Samuel fifteen eight, and he took Agag the king of the Amalekites alive. Who was he? Agag the king of the Amalekites, and we see here that Haman was an Agagite. Which meant that he was a descendant of the king Agag. Alright? Who was an Amalekite. Do you get the picture? Okay? You have to understand that this is the proof that these were the people. Alright? Who were constantly fighting with the Jews from generation to generation. And Haman was a part of these people from the past that were troubling the Jews. Okay. Haman was a descendant of the, of the king who Saul was supposed to kill. But because Saul didn't kill him and God knew it back in Exodus that there was going to be trouble with them from generation to generation. Why? Because of the hatred of Esau that he had for Jacob because Jacob stole his birthright. So here was a family feud that was going on for centuries that spanned centuries. And here we have Esther that God has placed in the kingdom. And for once and for all, God wants to deal with this spirit. And as we read, amen. And we start talking about Purim and we start talking about reading in here about how, uh, 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 Esther began to follow the instructions that uh, Mordecai had given her. Amen. And she asked the king to make a decree so that Haman would be Haman's sons would be hung. If you read that in, 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 in Esther chapter nine, his whole house was consumed. Everything that he had was consumed. Verse 13 in chapter nine says, then said Esther, if it pleased the king. Let it be granted to the Jews, which are in Shushan, to do tomorrow also according to this day's decree. And let Haman's ten sons be hanged upon the gallows. And the king commanded it to, so to be to be done. And the decree was given at Shushan, and they hanged Haman and his ten sons. Okay? When well, you read up there in verse 10, it talks about, uh, verse 10, it says, The ten sons of Haman, the sons of Hamadatha. The son of Hamadatha, the enemy of the Jews, slew they. But on the spoil laid they not their hand. They didn't touch anything that belonged to them. They didn't do what Saul did. There comes a point in time where somebody has to bring the ball home. Somebody has to decide that I'm going to walk in obedience. And this is what I wanted to bring before you and present to you. Stop allowing stuff from your past to continue to trouble you for once and for all like Esther did slay that stuff from your past get delivered from that stuff from your past let go of the stuff from your past don't allow your past to constantly trouble you anymore let 
it go. Be free from your past. Be delivered from your past. Hallelujah. Don't let your past hold you in bondage any longer. I don't care if it's a person, if it's a place or a thing. Let it go and walk free. The Bible says he that the son has set free is free indeed. You have got to let go of the things from the past. Anything that tried to have a stronghold on your life. Amen. On your mind, on your money, on your family. Amen. Anything that belongs to you, you got to let it go. Today is your day of liberty. Hallelujah. You got to hear and see that God wants you to be free. God wants you to be able to walk. Amen. In total and complete complete liberty from everything from the past. Amen. Because there is a place that he's called you to and you cannot get there unless you forget those things that are behind you and press on to those things that are ahead of you. You got to let it go. Let the past go. Let the issues from the past go. Let the people from the past go. Let the the thoughts from the past go. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, I thank you right now, God, for every person under the sound of my voice. God, and everything, oh God, that, hallelujah, that you have allowed them to hear on this morning. And God, we ask you right now, God, that you would touch them, that you would move upon them, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you would cause them, God, to let go of everything from the past in the name of Jesus. God, that their thoughts would be free, that their spirit man would be free. If it's people, if it's places, if it's things, whatever it is that is holding them in bondage, we speak liberty on today. God, I speak freedom. Hallelujah. He that the Son is set free is free indeed. And so, God, God, we bless you now. We honor you. We give you glory that even as we go into this day, we will no longer be troubled by our past. We will no longer be troubled by what anybody else says, how anybody else feels. We are walking in liberty because Christ has made us free. And whatever that spirit is, Every, every uh, spirit of the Amalekites, everything, oh God, that deals with spiritual blindness and instability, every spirit that is a lying spirit, every spirit, oh God, that comes, oh God, in haughtiness and pride, God, to try to drag us back into what used to be. We plead the blood right now. We declare that we walk in our future and we walk in the things of God because our future is bright because the God, the, the Lord, our God is with us and God, we thank you and we bless you and we honor you and we call it done in Jesus name. God bless you people of God. God bless you those that are listening. Don't walk in the past. Be free from your past today in Jesus name. You are free because the son has made you free. Let go of the past. Don't fight with it no more. Don't fight with them no more. Walk in the things that God has for you in Jesus name. God bless you. Join us again tomorrow where we stoke our fires for the things of God and the mind of God and get the heart of God with fire in the morning. God bless you.
a heart for this city, God. Make us love sick for this city, God, for the people of this city, God. We're asking for a huge harvest in this city in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, we ask that you would pour out your spirit here in Kansas City. Lord, we're asking for revival, Lord, in the churches. Lord, that you would increase your presence upon the churches in this city, Lord, that many even in the churches, would come to know you, that would turn to repentance, Lord, and follow after you. Lord, we ask for a great move of your spirit in this city, in Jesus' name. Praise be all my mommy and daddies. In Kansas City. In Kansas City. Jesus' name. Amen.